fire line goes inside the world of the Arvada Fire Department. In this segment, we ride along with Fire Inspector Randall S. Wiggum to learn how and why the Arvada Fire Department performs routine inspections of businesses. In Arvada, we have approximately 2,700 businesses that we inspect. Jim and Randall with Arvada Fire. Just wonder if I might be able to do your fire inspection. Sure. The type of business uh, takes into account, you know, how in depth you got to go into the code when you're doing the fire inspection. Randall Wiggum is one of two fire inspectors, but firehouse crews also do inspections. The f two fire inspectors they complete roughly about 720 inspections, and the crews are responsible for about 2,000 inspections. Restaurants present unique inspection needs to ensure the safety of patrons as well as employees. We want to make sure all the exit doors open without a problem. That way, in case there was an emergency, we can evacuate out of the building. Uh, this restaurant uh, is only required to have one exit, which is the, the main front door. We want to make sure that we got a nice main aisle like we have here to the exit door. Back behind the bar areas or uh, usually we have, we're looking for CO2 cylinders, compressed gas cylinders, make sure that they're, they're chained up. That's so they don't tip over. Inspector Wiggum would like to see these secured a little better, and in this case, takes care of it on the spot himself to eliminate a return inspection that would take time and taxpayer money. They're pretty well stable. Not, not great, but they're not going to be knocked over. And that's, that's one way easily to correct the fire code violation. In the kitchen, the inspector looks for grease buildup on the hood or appliances. This is what we, we're looking for. How clean this is is what, what we like to see. You have a fusible link up there for the suppression system. That's what will, will melt away if there's a grease fire. But what you're looking at is the, the hood ductwork going up to the, the roof. And we want to make sure we don't have a large accumulation of grease. He also checks what is called a hood suppression system. Which is a fire extinguishing system that protects the, the cooking appliances to make sure that that's been inspected and tested by an outside company every six months. He looks for 28 inch pathways in employee areas and checks out storage areas. What you're looking at is making sure that we can get a fire hose in through here and making sure we can hit all of the different areas that we need to without storage blocking our way. On the outside, he looks for electrical shutoffs and accessibility for fire engines. He'll also make notes about power lines on the pre-fire plan, and a critical part of the inspection is to make sure the address is on the building. Addresses uh, are extremely important uh, to us uh, because that's where we're going to get the help, not so much in a fire situation, but for in a medical situation. Inspectors complete a thorough report on any violations and note whether they need to return for a re-inspection. If a business does not comply after repeated inspections, the fire department can issue a summons into court. But most inspections are routine and inspectors also make notes that responding firefighters might need in an emergency. After we, we sign the report, we go ahead and save it into the computer system so we can uh, pull it back up and print it off or, or email it. And it's off to another inspection. We're going to an auto repair facility and a little bit different from your, your restaurant uh, atmosphere. Now we're, we're going to be looking at uh, flammable combustible liquid storage along with exits. Along with oil and gasoline, this particular shop also stores herbicides and other chemicals. The inspection begins on the outside. When we're out doing inspections, we want to make sure that the fire hydrant has three foot of clearance all the way around it. That's so the fire hose won't kink, and also to give firefighters room to stay clear of the water pressure. Our pressure in Arvada can get up to, you know, over well over 100 pounds. Uh, so we want to make sure that the safety of the firefighter, they're behind the hydrant when they open this in case a hose burst. Inside, the exit signs are checked. A little bit different here because this, this occupancy is required to have uh, a couple exits out of it. Uh, we want to make sure that they're up, they're visible, and they're lit. Horn and strobes, very important off of the, the fire sprinkler, fire alarm system in this business. Uh, if there is an emergency where the fire sprinkler goes off, this will sound and then also flash to notify the occupants of the building that they need to evacuate. 
A fire separation wall and door ensure that a fire from the garage side of the building wouldn't spread to the office area and vice versa. Inside the shop areas, uh, just uh, we want to make sure our, our pathways to our exit doors are clear and unobstructed. Wiggum looks to make sure fire extinguishers are near the exits, well marked and recently inspected. This was January of 2010. When we have uh, businesses that, that have uh, two or more exits in them, we have what's called emergency route lighting. Uh, what that does is if the electrical power is shut off to the building, it'll light up the egress pathways. Backup batteries keep the lights working for 90 minutes to help occupants navigate their way out of the building. This facility also does spray painting. Spray painting operations uh, are required to be done in an approved spray, spray paint booth. And we're, what we're looking in here is we're looking at this one is protected by the fire sprinkler system. Filters need to be clean. If you have glass inside your spray paint booth, it's got to be uh, fire rated. Inspector Wiggum checks ventilation in the spray paint booth. This is what we want to see when you come in, the fan, it's doing a cross ventilation of air from the outside up and in. This is a pesticide storage locker. And what we got up here is we got what we call an NFPA uh, 704 placard. And what this does is it tells the firefighters what type of hazard that we got in here. The red is associated with fire, blue is associated with health hazards like corrosives. Uh, the yellow is your activity and the white is if it's water reactive. So what we're looking at here is we have a pretty high fire hazard that's in here. And then we got a medium uh, health hazard. So we want to make sure that everywhere that there's hazardous materials that we have this NFPA 704 placard. A specialty cabinet with doors that close automatically allows some additional safety for highly flammable items such as stains or gasoline cans. So every time you get in and out of here that this is going to close and stay closed in case there is a fire, this, this material is going to be protected or these doors, if it happens to happen inside this cabinet, these doors will shut and hopefully smother the fire out before it extends anywhere. In an automobile repair uh, facility, what we're looking for is the storage again of flammable combustible liquids. Uh, you're looking at how they uh, store their rags after they're done using them. The fire code requires that the rags be put in a metal can with the self-closing lid. Uh, you're looking at their housekeeping practices to make sure that there isn't a lot of material on the floors to where if there was an accident, uh, that they can get to their exits without a problem. Inspections go a long way in educating the public about fire safety, as well as protecting the community. And they also ensure firefighter safety. If something does happen in one of these businesses, that they know what's going on in there. They know what type of hazards that they're going to face when they go inside these buildings. By following me around today, you've seen a large portion of what we do in the fire service as far as fire inspections are concerned. Uh, we're here to educate the business person and also protect the public so they can shop, so they can eat, and so they conduct their business inside our fire district. Thank you.